So the other day I was bored at work and doodling some Gladys patterns on a piece of scrap paper, as you do. I realized that it's not super easy to draw lattice designs since you can't tell where the overs and unders are supposed to be, and that led me to consider using numbers to write out lattice patterns instead, which then got me thinking about the lovely duplexity of the digits in binary code. Then I got really excited because sometimes I'm a giant nerd. All that to say, I realized I could use an embroidered lattice work to stitch messages utilizing binary code if I just assigned the numerals one and zero the positions of either over or under. I went home and created this short message, then showed it to my husband, who instantly deciphered it simply by counting the number of letters in each word and guessing. In all fairness, I had already told him it was binary, so he had a leg up. Naturally, I had to go bigger.
all of this work on embroidered binary lattices made me wonder if embroidery had ever been used to hide secret messages before. I posed the question on Instagram to cull what info I could from the community, and I got so many helpful tips of what to research, so thank you so much to everyone who responded. I read a lot of articles, and I'll link the ones that I found this info on in the description for anyone who's interested in exploring the topic some more. The first thing I picked up is that most stories concerning sewing and spying are not well substantiated and therefore are quite controversial, which just makes things more intriguing in my opinion. I am particularly interested in embroidery specifically and codes being used in it, but most of the info on espionage in the textile arts was about knitting, which makes more sense as it's generally faster to craft the needlepoint of any kind. In wartime, information had to be passed quickly and I'm sure no one had time to sit down and embroider a detailed handkerchief in order to hide a coded message. On the other hand, you can knit a scarf pretty quickly. There are a couple varied opinions on how messages could be hidden in knitting. Some say the two basic knitting stitches, an ordinary loop and a figure eight knot, were used as the dot and dash of Morse code, while others say that the knitter would leave a hole in the knitted material to stand for the dot. Another story, which is apparently deemed an exaggeration, says that the yarn would be knotted with a message first and then knitted into a sweater which the messenger could wear. Once unraveled, the yarn was held up to an alphabet drawn with each letter one inch apart, and the placement of each knot lined up to the next letter of the message. That one does sound a little too time consuming on both ends to be realistic, but it's a pretty awesome idea. One of the most famous instances of a knitted code is actually fictional. In Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities, a character knits beside the guillotine, hiding the names of nobles who are to be executed in her work. There is reason to believe that some sort of espionage was related to knitting as there was a time when the UK banned mailing knitting patterns abroad for fear that they would be hiding secret messages. By far the coolest story I found barely had anything to do with knitting at all, so I won't go into it here. But if you'd like to read about a badass female spy, check out the article about Pippa Latour that I've linked below. The next big story I found involving stitching and secrets is the quilts used as maps or guides for the Underground Railroad. There are actually books written about this concept, but it's still highly controversial. From what I could gather, the idea's main source was the oral tradition of one family, so many historians argue that that's not enough to claim it as truth. The basic idea is that quilt patterns would include symbols meant to instruct escaping slaves on where to go, how to dress and act, who to talk to, and so on. Sounds like a solid idea to me, sounds totally believable, but I can't understand how they don't want to label it as truth when there hasn't been enough evidence to act actually support it. But let's get into actual embroidery. Like I said, there's not really a lot out there about secret messages being hidden in needlepoint, but the biggest story concerns Mary Queen of Scots, famously held in custody by Queen Elizabeth for over 18 years. Apparently, she was an avid stitcher, as were many of her ladies-in-waiting and her best friend, Bess of Hardwick. Together, they stitch many, many panels that can be viewed in a few museums today, and a lot of the panels featured either animals or nature scenes. Historians are pretty sure that almost all of them are heavily symbolic, possibly even to the point of carrying specific messages. A ginger cat playing with a gray mouse could be referring to Mary's relationship with the queen, who had red hair. A marigold with its face to the sun could stand for Mary's own resilience. And most famously, a hand pruning a fruitless grapevine probably stands for Mary's claim to the throne over childless Elizabeth. Moving forward to the Victorian times, it is believed that the popular language of flowers, which had flourished and developed developed its own style in England after being carried over from Turkey, extended to embroidery as well as the florist. Floral motifs were exceptionally common in Victorian era embroidery, and with such a specific code applied to each type or even color of flower, a handkerchief embroidered with yellow carnations could be a pretty solid rejection letter. Still, none of these stories concern actual written messages being converted to code and then stitched into a piece of embroidery, except the Kazdagli sampler. I think I'm saying that last name right. During World War II, a British POW in a German camp was able to do some cross-stitching. It was later discovered that a row of dots and dashes he had sewn around the border was actually Morse code, reading God Save the King and um, <clears throat> F. Hitler. Proving, once again, that embroidery has a long history as an art form of rebellion against tyranny. We may look quiet and peaceful when we're stitching, but keep in mind the amount of stabbing it involves. I also got some great info on the 
Hutsuls, I would think they're called, in Ukraine, whose embroidery is almost a language, and the, I'm going to say it's pronounced Mao in China, who have long used embroidery as a way to keep and retell history. So those articles are linked below as well if you'd like to read more about them. All in all, though I didn't find much information on espionage and coding being interworked into embroidery, this was a really awesome subject to pursue. It also led me to consider even more how much history may remain hidden today because it mainly concerned women or a female-associated craft like stitching. I would love to know what you guys think about the possibility of spies using secret messages in embroidery in the past, so feel free to leave a comment below if you'd like to have a conversation about it. So I'm sure the pressing question on everyone's mind is, do you know binary now? To that I say, 01101110011101111. Actually, there are several codes I could recognize instantly, like those for A, E, and Y, but most of them would take a lot more practice to commit to memory. I did take the time, again while bored at work, to actually memorize this beautiful poem, which has always been one of my favorites due to the grace with which its words flow. So let me transition to my yoga voice, and we'll see if I've got it down. She walks in beauty like the night, of cloudless climes and starry skies, and all that's best of dark and bright are in her aspect and her eyes. Thus mellowed to that tender light, which heaven to gaudy day denies. One shade the more, one ray the less, had half impaired the nameless grace, which waves in every raven tress, or softly lightens o'er her face. Where thoughts serenely sweet express, how pure, how dear their dwelling place. And on that cheek, and o'er that brow, so soft, so calm, yet eloquent, the smiles that win, the tints that glow, yet speak of days in goodness spent, a mind at peace with all below, a heart whose love is innocent. Y'all, I promise I did not just read that. Anyway, don't really know how to wrap this up except to say, time well spent. Anyone want a coded binary and bordered lattice message hanging? Because I'd kind of like to make some more. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you next time.